Okay, let's continue on to section 5, Next Generation Firewall Features. Security Profiles Overview. Okay, everyone, in this section, we're going to take a look at the Palo Alto security profiles. And this is the reason why you want to put a next generation firewall on your network to have not just the basic network based access control. You know, we want to block a specific resource to reach a specific subnet. We want to limit the amount of traffic that we go that we bring from the Internet inbound to our network. It is not just that. We're also implementing a, a stateful firewall that will inspect traffic up to the packet level and identify if we are carrying any possible threats on our environment, either as incoming from the outside or as something actually malicious already on the network and is trying to spread across your zones. And this is why you want to implement those security profiles. So you have granular control of any possible threat or also enforce the way that the network should flow or be accessed based on your company's policies. So we're going to take a look at antivirus. We're going to take a look at anti-spyware, URL filtering, and denial of service protection. We're going to focus on those items, which I believe they're very important for you to understand and to enable in the Palo Alto firewall. So, and this is my experience with stateful firewalls or next generation firewalls. Company A acquires a firewall and it can be a Palo Alto, it can be any other uh, firewall. They put it in production and they forgot to enable those features. And you know, you wonder why you are going to take number one, the money to invest in a solution like this, take the time to implement and then at the end, you don't enable what you were supposed to do with it, which in this case is identify specific threats that might be hitting your network or traveling on between your zones, not being able to mitigate them or identify them correctly. And this is the reason why we want to take a look at the overview. We're going to take a look at all the options that the Palo Alto firewall, and then we're going to configure a specific policy so you can identify how to create custom ones or how to use the default Palo Alto profiles that you just basically enable on your policy and you're good to go. Alrighty, so let's take a look at each one. So if you take a look, we got antivirus. So you basically have your source and destination traffic, right? And inside that policy, you have the ability to enable Profiles. So you create an antivirus profile and you will take a look and, and we will take a look in a bit. And basically what it's going to do is going to identify if there's a possible known threat between that source and destination that is flowing via the Palo Alto. The Palo Alto will be able to detect that. And the antivirus database is being queried out of Wildfire. So Palo Alto's threat signature database. So on the cloud, they have what they call wildfire. This is where they analyze every single possible thread that the firewall detects that is not known. They will analyze that on their sandbox. There's an environment dedicated just to research. They will identify and they will see, okay, well, this matches this type of behavior. Let's classify this as XYZ. And they'll put a name to it and then they'll detect that as a known thread and they'll update you and not only you, but everyone that is a part of the Wildfire platform to, hey, we got this known thread. Let's go ahead and update our all firewalls to make sure that they're up to date and, you know, any of our customers are not compromised because of this. Anti-spyware, very similar to antivirus. So it's going to be looking for anything that matches a possible spyware and uh, we'll either block it, monitor it, or whatever you want to do with it. You want to monitor it and just be alerted about it, but not actually block it, you can definitely do that. Or you can just let the Palo Alto do the default actions, and we're going to take a look at that. URL filtering, we're also going to be blocking websites, and this is, very, this is a very common scenario with next-generation firewalls. You have a couple of policies on the network, policies that belong to the C-level executives, which they are allowed to basically go anywhere on the internet. You have limited users where they're only allowed to go to a number of websites and you basically limit their ability to go anywhere on the internet. And you got allowed users or privileged users that aren't going to be able to go 
to most websites, but not as many as the C-level executives. Uh, file blocking. We want to block anything either has been, is going to be downloaded to one of our clients, to one of our users. If they're going to download an executable file, we want to block it because we're not allowing to download either executable SIPs, you know, something that might be a copyright file and things like that. You can block based on extensions. So you can say, well, I'm not going to allow executables downloaded from the internet. I'm not going to allow SIP files. I am not going to allow MP3 files, etc. You just put the policy in place and the Palo Alto will take care of that action. Wildfire, like I was mentioning, in Wildfire, you the Palo Alto detects something that is um, not known. You can basically send that for Wildfire analysis, and basically in the Wildfire platform, they're gonna do uh, analysis and come up with a verdict to say, okay, yeah, it's malicious, it is not malicious, etc. And finally, the OS protection, someone that is trying to limit a resource on your firewall, in this case, is trying to perform an attack to drop services or overwhelm a, an entry point, in this case, the outside interface, for example, you enable the OS protection and it will take care of that. Okay, so let's do a quick dig into all the sections and I will be explaining you a little bit more in detail. Okay, everyone, so once we log in onto the Palo Alto firewall, we're gonna click on objects and right below here, we scroll a little bit down and we're gonna see the section for security profiles. So let's click on security profiles. And once inside, you're going to see all the objects or all the possible profiles that you can enable on the Palo Alto firewall. So if we begin with antivirus, and I mentioned earlier that the Palo Alto firewall will come with default profiles, then you can just enable on the policy and you should be good to go. And what well, that will do, if you see here, it already shows you the type of service and what's the action that it's gonna use if it detects a possible virus on that particular traffic. In this case, HTTP, something that, that matches HTTP traffic and it might be malicious, it will have a default action of reset both client and server connection. So it's gonna drop your client connection, it's gonna basically reset it, reset the server and try it again. If it keeps getting any threats, it's gonna do that type of action. If you see SMTP alert, I am not actually going to block it, I am just gonna tell you, hey, I just got this and my AV profile, what do you wanna do? And then you decide what you wanna do. So, and you can see the same for IMAP, POP, FTP, and SMB. So again, same with uh, Wildfire. So you're gonna say, well, I am going to my HTTP. This is what I wanna do in my Wildfire action. If you have a custom profile that you want to change, so meaning maybe you want to have SMTP to be blocked instead of alert, then instead of the default, you create a custom one. So you click on add, and then in add, I can actually change this setting here. So for example, SMTP, I can allow it, just, you know, even though that you find something, uh, just allow it, alert me, drop it, or, like I mentioned, reset one side of the connection. In this case, either the client or the server or both. Uh, same with Wildfire, you will have the same settings. So um, if you have an application exemption, uh, you can type it there. So even though that you might detect this as malicious, you want to just bypass that particular application. Don't do any actions upon that. Okay, and with anti spyware it's gonna be very similar. You have default strict, those are default. They come already in, enabled on the Palo Alto. Those are already created profiles and you can either select those or create your custom one. And we'll go into this in detail on our next video. Same with vulnerability protection. You have already predefined strict and default profiles and you just select one that suits your environment best and then you enable that on the policy. URL filtering, we're also gonna take a look at that. This is a, by default, it has a list and a allow and block categories and we'll configure that in our next video. And you're gonna know how to block a specific website. File blocking, again, you have default file types that I'm going to block. So if you see in the action here, I am going to block those files. I am going to alert about anything else and then I'm just gonna continue for those one and not alert. So continue means just keep going, don't do anything, don't tell me, okay? And then strict has obviously a little bit more files being blocked based on this policy. Wildfire analysis, 
and this is where you select what's the default action. If you just want to enable default action, Wildfire will basically auto detect and auto scan or auto identify and monitor that traffic based on the public cloud infrastructure that Wildfire will provide you. So on your policy, you just enable Wildfire. And then once you do that, it's just let the Palo Alto do his work and it will report to Wildfire for analysis. And finally, DOS protection. You have a possible way of, of protecting that outside interface or inside because you might know if there's retaliation inside your network and you want to make sure that DOS is enabled in the Palo Alto so it does not get disrupted by any possible DOS attack. And you configure this um, uh, as a profile and you attach that onto the policy. So let's go ahead and uh, configure AV anti spyware. I'm going to do some URL filtering. And I'm also going to be configuring DOS protection so you can take a look of how you can take advantage of those security profiles. Alrighty, and I think that's it for now. Let's go ahead and configure AV and anti spyware. Okay, everyone, so we just finished the security profiles overview.